Welcome everyone in the Scientix webinar Leonardo for Children 2021 Climate Action and Gender Equality. I am Eleni Mirciotti and I coordinate the online training activities for Scientix. Today we have with us my colleague Kirgan Antonova who is attending and supporting this webinar. If you experience technical issues, please leave us a message in the Q&A box. Today with us we have Alessandro Carano, project manager of the Carano for Children initiative, Margherita Mesirka and Ant an unstart teacher and education coordinator with a background in international charities from Italy and the UK respectively, who will talk to us about the Leonardo for Children initiative and competition that takes place in the context of the 2021 STEM discovery campaign. So without any further ado, Alessandro, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Ebony, and thank you for uh, to all the participants for joining this, uh, this webinar. I'm very pleased to be here. I, I am the founder, actually, of the Carano for Children Foundation, which has uh, launched this uh, Leonardo for Children non-profit initiative since uh, the end of 2018. And so we are now at the third edition of this uh, initiative, and the concept has evolved over time. So today uh, we will discuss about the objectives of the initiative, which are the partners and the link to the EU Climate Pact, because as you have seen, the initiative is on climate and on gender equality. We will describe you with the, with the help of Margherita, the competitions which are now open for children and for teenagers on, uh, on these two topics, climate and gender. We will, uh, we will describe what are the awards for the winners, and what are the planned events. This is the link to the website you can see at the bottom where you can find, of course, more information. So here is a different source of inspiration we got from, uh, from a famous, uh, famous uh, people, including Picasso, and, uh, and inspired by Leonardo da Vinci, because actually the initiative started uh, in 2018, in view of the 500 year anniversary of Leonardo da Vinci, in order to stimulate the creativity of, uh, of children and teenagers across Europe, uh, inspired by Leonardo and inspired also by this, uh, by this uh, quote, in order to uh, also support uh, beneficiary children in beneficiary projects with art and science. So, this year we decided to, to ask the children to become the new Leonardo of today. So we, we invite them to become the new Leonardo of today. So to use the both sides of the brain, the left and the right, the creativity and the rational part together, because we believe there is a synergy and there are better results when we use both of them in teamwork, uh, ideally. And so to use this, uh, to use this uh, thinking in order to help uh, addressing two of, uh, of major issues we have today. One is the climate uh, change and the other is the social issue of gender equality. So we, we decided to apply this, uh, this approach of Leonardo for Children to tackle these two problems. So it's a kind of embryon, even we are at the third edition, we started with the fables of Leonardo da Vinci, then we developed it into climate action last year, and now we added gender equality. So it's an embryo of a, of a mini Nobel Prize for, uh, for young people. This slide shows the, the basic philosophy of the initiative. So we, we want the children and the teenagers to engage. We want to empower them to reflect on these topics. And that's why we have these competitions, because it helps children to, to engage, because they have a challenge. There are awards, as we will see. We focus on combination of art and science. This is a bit the DNA of the initiative. And with this DNA, we also transmit a solidarity purpose. We, we, we want to help children in need with education in art and science. And how do we, do we, do we translate this DNA in practice? It's through events, concerts, we've done a number in the pre-COVID era, and we will do more, I hope, and I believe in the post-COVID era. And we also have a book which collects the works of the winners. Uh, in this case, there were the fables of Leonardo da Vinci and the work on art and science. And uh, through this book, we, we raise funds in favor of, uh, of beneficiary projects. 
We have uh, now the support and the patronage of the European Committee of the Regions, and as of today, also the European Economic and Social Committee. This is just news of today, plus the Tuscany region, and more part patronage are coming. Uh, we have a number of partners, from the Foundation Philippe Cousteau to Europa Encanto, which is a, 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 a group focusing on opera uh, singing lessons for uh, for children. Then we have the Menuhin Foundation, which is focusing on uh, on music and inclusiveness, and they have a music program to help children in uh, in various European countries. And then we have more uh, local Italian and, uh, and regional associations and uh, cultural foundations. Essentially, these are all non-profit uh, partners. Then we have uh, uh, made a pledge and we have also submitted an application. We are waiting for a reply to the EU or uh, to the European Commission as part of the EU Climate Pact because the initiative fits very well based on our preliminary feedback with the Commission that it fits very well with this engagement of civil society, uh, including, of course, young people uh, on the topic of climate which follows, of course, the, the Greta movement. Now the EU is taking the initiative to also, let's say, develop a more outreach to civil society. And so our initiative uh, is going to be part of this program. Now I leave it to Margarita to go a bit more in detail for the competitions. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you, Alessandro. So good afternoon, everybody. I am Margarita Bezirka. I am a teacher. I am an expert of Leonardo da Vinci writings. I am studying creativity. So as you see, we propose competitions uh, for uh, children resident in AU, aged from 6 to 12 years old, open until the uh, end of May, and the announcement of the winners will be by mid um, mid uh, June and there are two kinds of competitions one about the climate change and one about gender uh, equality. What should children do? To participate, they should create an original fable on climate or on gender equality. And this fable should be maximum 200 words with a morale. At the end, we mean uh, with morale a strong message, maybe a possible solution which should be inspiring for, for everybody. And this fable should be illustrated with the comic strip of two up to 10 frames with at least two colors. Of course, we, we ask for 100% originality and uh, there will be a bonus for multicultural and teamwork. And for teenagers resident in AU aged 13 up to 18 years old, uh, there are two competitions. One is art and science on climate and the other is art and science on gender equality. Both are open until end of May and the announcement of winners will be at mid-June. Okay, so what should uh, teenagers do? First of all, they should use their creativity, their creative thinking and their artistic and scientific skills to create an original work. And this work should integrate one art topic and one scientific topic. So we really believe that creativity um, finds its place in the integration of uh, different kind of uh, art and science. So for instance, music, dance, culture, drawing and painting. It could be integrated to energy or transport or aeronautics, biology, ICT. On climate or on gender equality, uh, what should teenagers do? They should address the issue, think about it, proposing possibly a solution and how they can do it. They should uh, create a, a, a work 
made in physical material or in a multimedia or digital means like picture or video. And uh, of course, there are a, a lot of possibility and uh, this is also creativity. I mean, drawing, they can really find and choose the best way to express. So drawing or painting, novel, story, poem, music or dance, handicraft or sculpture, project design or uh, any other creative work. Uh, we think that they should be inspired to inspire everybody. So we encourage also the, um, the study when possible of Leonardo da Vinci's work. Last year, the winner uh, had really studied and read a lot about Leonardo uh, works for his talking about the, the ideal city. And then from Leonardo, he built a new ideal city. Uh, so this matching was very successful and um, we of course ask for a very total original work not containing any kind of third parties work and uh, uh, possibly by participating children in a team and in the context of a class activity. Okay and I go back to Alessandro. How to apply? Yes, thank you very much. Um, here are uh, the, the main uh, references and the links. So you will find in uh, four languages the terms and conditions which are summarizing the rules to, to, to apply to the competitions. In, uh, in English, French, Italian and Spanish at the website, there is a dedicated page from the home page dedicated to Leonardo Torcino 2021. There is also information on the previous year's uh, competitions and the winners we will show in a second. And uh, there is also information about the book, the beneficiary projects, the events. And uh, so you can find the information on the website. Uh, for the competition, this is the email. There is a small typo, apologies. It should be Carano for children. Uh, dot org. Uh, so this is the email for applying or asking questions to the comp related to the competition. And then there is a general email and there are a number of social media uh, with the name of the foundation. So you can find the information here. These are some examples of the winners. So we put the winner of uh, two years ago for art and science and the number two. The first one is a is a is a circuit uh, on climate, actually on the aspects of climate change. In this picture, it's a bit small, but uh, if you go on the website, you will see all the various effects on the on the drought, on the fires, and uh, various effects of climate change with a circuit, which was actually uh, illuminating the various uh, sides of the, of the circuit which was brought then into an event in Brussels. Physically, we have shown it. It's a big, a big panel. The number two is a dance inspired by Leonardo da Vinci. And uh, these uh, dancers were performing uh, in harmony with the background of various paintings and, uh, and artworks by Leonardo. And then we have uh, some pictures of the winners. Then we have two bubbles in the bottom right the fable on the candle getting too close to the, the sorry the butterfly getting too close to the to the candle and then there is also a moral uh, because it's important also to try to have the children uh, drawing a lesson out of the fable with a moral and then there is another fable of Leonardo da Vinci on the on a competition between fire and water and ultimately the water prevails uh, despite the fire believing, believing is uh, superior. These bubbles are very interesting because the, the commonality of these bubbles of Leonardo is that uh, they teach, they transmit an important message which is related both to climate and also to gender equality. To climate because it's important to know the nature and to be competent and knowledgeable about the nature. And this is a message in many of the fables of Leonardo, which, as you know, who, as you know, was uh, exploring uh, the nature ultimately, either through science or through art. And, uh, and it's also relevant for gender equality, or let's say for, for social aspects in general, because in many of the fables we have the issue of respect for the others. 
So there is, for example, like the fire and the water, but there are also dialogues between uh, between trees, which are competing with each other, who has the better uh, children. And so there is a message of respect for the others, which is important to, to succeed. And then there is a plastic pot also recycling uh, sculpture that has been made by these, uh, by these uh, teenagers. These are just some examples. We have 10 winners for each competition. So we have already, let's say, 40 groups. In some cases, there are classes. So we have already 20 from 2019 and 20 from 2020. So it's quite uh, already a good basis. And uh, if you want to get some inspiration, but of course, the best is to, is to let the children and the teenagers be as creative as possible and not, not just uh, look at what has been done before. This is more for the, for the teachers to, to get some inspiration. And again, these are some links. Uh, again, through the website, you can go and look at some examples of the winners from previous editions. So I would uh, continue then, uh, unless Margarita wants to take it. Mm, yes, OK, fine. Yeah. OK, so which are the award, the awards? Uh, the, the 10 works with the best scoring for each competition will receive uh, the awards. That is publication on Leonardo for Children book, presentation at workshop and award ceremony, Presentation to public events, institutions, or public places, including famous museums and during concerts and events. Leonardo for Children 2021 Award Certificate and publication on website, social media, and promotional material. And uh, we are looking for sponsor and partners to offer special awards, which would consist in material related to the art and science or also special experiences related to art and science, such as, for example, you can switch the slide, presentation at the State of the Union in Florence uh, on the May the 8th, concert in Brussels at the end of September, and uh, we are planning a workshop with the children who participated in the competitions, teachers and beneficiary children and award ceremony. This is something that really um, expressed the, the spirit of all this project because we think that uh, really children can connect uh, through creativity. And so this idea to put them in connection uh, thanks to creativity uh, is very important and this workshop uh, could be really the, the right moment and uh, for them to see that they really are in, on, a, on the same uh, world and thinking about and tackling the same uh, issues. And uh, okay, so maybe Alessandra, you can close with the um, award ceremony. Um, actually, I might just add a couple of points around the events. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Anne Start, one of the trustees uh, for the Carano Foundation, and uh, my background is in development and humanitarian NGOs, uh, international NGOs. Um, the presentation at the 10th annual um, State of the Union conference is hosted in the European University. So it's an ideal forum for discussion and debate on the most relevant issues facing Europe and Europeans. And it's exciting because the date is the 8th of May. Uh, many of you will know the day before the anniversary of the Schumann Declaration in 1950. Um, the concert that's mentioned uh, on the 30th of September that will involve participating children and young people and other professional musicians and we're hoping to have uh, uh, both face-to-face um, -face actual presence in a venue and uh, live streaming if we can uh, and involving children in the programs. Um, there may be some other events this year, but these are still in the early stages of planning and we'll definitely keep you informed by the um, various social media um, platforms that Alessandra has mentioned. And then finally, and definitely not least, just to reassure you teachers, parents, students, that 
All events will take place with full uh, child safeguarding good practice in place and fully compliant with COVID regulations to make sure that while the children are having these amazing experiences, they're also completely safe. Thank you. Uh, thank you all very much for this uh, engaging presentation and for talking uh, to us about what Leonardo for Children is about. Uh, we have some time, so I would like to try and share my screen now and show examples of best practices from last uh, year's winners. And here we can see the winning entry of the competition Arts and Science on Climate Action and uh, what uh, the winning team did uh, last year. So, uh, Alessandro, would you like to guide us through and mention a few things? Yes, I think, well, best would be that uh, that Anne or Margarita do it because they were in the jury and I'm not in the jury, I'm independent, so uh, <laughs> I, either Anne or Margarita can okay. I I can do it. So, Absolutely. Yeah, so for instance, Georgi, really got inspiration from uh, uh, Leonardo Ideal City. So Leonardo really studied and thought about how could a city be in a better state for hygiene and also for the general, we would say, well-being of everybody. So he, Georgi, writes in the comments of the work that he really studied Leonardo's work and he found it very inspiring also and very actual. And so he built his own own um, ideal city and as you know it's really really amazing because it's a city on two levels the first and upper level is for pedestrian and in case uh, um, people can use the bike and the the, um, the first level is for uh, parking and for uh, uh, cars and for the river who is thought to, to furnish also energy. And all the, the plan of this, this, uh, this plan of the city is built by um, recycled material. So really, this is a wonderful example of creativity because uh, I think that creativity um, that its most value under constraint. I mean that Georgi had to create something new, but it had to be something that proposed a solution. And so he studied Leonardo and then he found his actual and modern solution and he he created this uh, wonderful uh, uh, ideal city that I find very inspiring and could be inspiring also for modern architect and uh, a specialist of uh, city planning. So for instance, this is a, a good way to, to put together, you see, uh, I mean, this, thinking and then creating something and then thinking about the materials and then drawing inspiration and uh, finding the solution. So that's a great work. Thank you very much, Margarita. And here we have another winning entry. Yeah, that's uh, of course this is a, a, a drawing, and you, you see. I mean, uh, I read a, a question before that asked how can we help the climate with art. So I mean, art can be very can be very strong in the message. So if you can be a, really a meaningful and powerful mean of expression. So you see if you contemplate uh, and if you meditate on this uh, drawing, you really feel and see it's like a mise en abeam of what is happening uh, on the earth now. And so there is really a creative idea to, to really to show what is happening and uh, this double level of uh, pain for Earth, uh, which has been humanized uh, and uh, the, the ruin of the, the um, 
I mean, the climate and the environment. So it's uh, it's a great work. It is an amazing work, and at this point, we would like to repeat that uh, we are running also the competitions in the context of the STEM discovery campaign and this year the overall topic of the campaign is sustainability and citizenship so it's very interesting for us to see what teachers uh, from primary secondary and high school uh, can organize with their students what type of activities for example this one uh, seems more like a, an activity for a primary school or a junior high but this one seems a bit more complicated at yes. least uh, from an artistic perspective so Yes, at all. Yeah, I, uh, it's very important. I mean, uh, every at every level of age and also at every level of competencies, because we had another webinar with other teachers and someone was worried about the artistic quality of the work. Of course, I mean, quality has to be there, but uh, when creativity is there, quality comes out. In, in every in every time. So, for instance, yes, this is a work that uh, um, that shows a lot of ability in a technical way, of course, because it's something like a, a visual narrative of a process. And um, but if we could, if we compare the previous work to this one, we we get aware of the fact that in both cases uh, there is creativity. I mean, there is the idea to step from something we already know to a way to show it that is new and that has a big impact on the ones who are looking. So this is the idea, this is the new perspective. Creativity is a new perspective on something that maybe we already know or think about, but through and thanks to this new perspective, we can go over and beyond and find something really new or maybe a solution. Of course, and uh, it is very interesting also to mention that uh, the teacher and the students in this particular artwork seem to have mixed several media, or at least this looks like a collage. And of course, there is um, there are unlimited uh, possibilities for creativity. They can also use uh, text, um, anything really, video, yeah. audiovisual materials, digital media, blogs. Um, and this uh, looks like an illustration from uh, um, in design, I would say. So yeah. it uh, looks very, very professional. At, at all, at all. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And also, this one is mixing really advertising and um, something like video, and then this this idea of yeah of, of a surprise. That is, of course, coming from the uh, maybe the advertising world, but in a totally new way because uh, at the end, it's not what we expected. And also, this matching between cars and from cars is uh, to nature is is totally new. It's it's that's it creativity. So and also the the step from one to other, you know, the the process that brings to to nature and to a solution. Is, uh, is amazing, we think. Uh, absolutely, Margarita, we agree. And uh, I also encourage our participants to post their questions in the chat. We're going to address them in a while as we uh, are about to finalize showing the artwork of the students. So please make sure to let us know if you have any questions for uh, uh, Alessandro, Margarita and Anne. Eleni, I think some questions. Um, there was one on the eligibility uh, from, I think, a teacher from Adriana. Uh, I responded that, uh, and I want to give an explanation. We have Absolutely. A why we have, uh, we have uh, let's say, the strict competitions uh, are open to, to any children, any child or any teenager who is resident in the European Union with no, no differentiation for nationality because we have to apply the rules uh, of the EU, for example, with respect to copyright, with respect to the data privacy, especially as we are dealing with children. And for us, it has been it's already ambitious that we launched the, two years ago these competitions at the EU level. But let's say we are more familiar with these uh, provisions which are important from a legal point of view to protect the children in a EU context. 
we are not equipped at this stage to know exactly what are the regulations in other countries, which are very specific. And as I said, these are sensitive points of the copyright and the data privacy, especially for children, that we don't know how to comply with, and plus the language, etc. So that's the reason. But on the other hand, the spirit of the initiative is very uh, flexible and can be adapted, and we don't want to, to make a distinction between children. So in fact, we have a lot of beneficiary projects in, uh, in countries outside Europe, like in Kenya, soon probably Ivory Coast with UNICEF, in Jordan, in uh, Ukraine. So we, we have this uh, ecumenic spirit and we want to help all the children and we want to offer. So this, uh, this leads to say that uh, if you are in uh, Balkans countries, in Turkey or somewhere else, and you want to still uh, promote these activities, this is more than welcome. Uh, you have to adapt, let's say, this, this uh, regulation regarding to copyright and the data privacy and protection of children to your own legislation, and you know better than us. So feel free to do it locally and send us the contribution, because if we see sufficient interest, we may want to develop uh, in the future also in other countries. So we count, let's say, on the initiative of teachers, if you even want to do it locally and send us the contribution, even if it's strictly not eligible for the awards, we will still do our effort to send a certificate to invite you to the workshop in Brussels, uh, because we will have remote connections to promote your uh, your, contrib your children's contributions on the social media, on the website, etc. So we we would like to offer you, let's say, the possibility to still do it. Then there was a question from Brad on the presentation date for 2022 or 2021. I have not uh, exactly understood maybe uh, what is the question, if you can uh, repeat it, because the initiative is, is staying in 2021. We will probably repeat it next year, uh, but we are not scheduling the uh, out of the, this initiative, something going on into next year. Of course, it depends then on the possibility to do events in person due to, to the pandemic situation. We are quite confident we will be able to make a hybrid event on the 1st of October. So at least with some people in presence and some people remotely connected. In the worst case that this will not be possible, we will only have a remote connection like we are doing now. So that is already we have uh, we've done a number of webinars, also with the winners of previous years. So, by the way, we have uh, very interesting uh, quotes and testimonials from children who participated in previous years, like uh, a child, a teenager who said that if the world were as she has drawn it uh, or as she has imagined it, it would be much better. And this made, uh, gave her a sense of satisfaction in, in participating to the competition. Thank you very much for clarifying, um, Alessandro. Uh, we, we have received another question. Why are there such fixed age limits? Could children younger than 13 submit items for the art competition? Uh, okay, that was also a previous question. Uh, yes. Um, no, this is not possible in the sense that we decided to split in the majority of countries with primary school, so we took the children between 6 and 12, and we focused on the fables because we thought this would be appropriate, and in any case, to invent a fable, and it, it gives to the children of this uh, small age a little framework to have a fable. Um, and at least it, it allows them to use the art and science capacity to to develop a story, which is in the form of a fable. We are only saying that they should put the things in a, in a frame of at least two frames with a, with a story behind, because the issue of a story is a little bit channeling their thinking a little bit more, but still we leave a lot of room for creativity. For the art and science, we leave, uh, let's say, more uh, because they are a little bit older, the children between 13 and 18. Of course, we leave uh, we, we ask them to, take, to pick up one art topic, mix it with a scientific topic in a creative way, and to address again either climate or gender equality issues. And uh, 
and exactly you have seen already the diversity with the examples we have just shown. Even in this range, 13, 18, there is a big diversity. So we need to have a minimum of homogeneity for the jury to be able to assess a relatively homogeneous group uh, of contributions. And still, uh, the ranges are seven years and, and uh, six years. It's quite, uh, quite significant, the gap, but we want to keep it separate. Thank you very much, Alessandro. And then we have an interesting comment, uh, question comment saying, why is climate change always viewed negatively? Maybe it has some positive results or aspects as well. Has this been investigated? Uh, can I answer? Ab absolutely. <laughs> I think, yeah, I, I find this is a very interesting qu um, question. And I would say, if you think that maybe uh, climate change could have some positive uh, results uh, put it in the in the work in the proposal for the competition we are very curious i mean uh, maybe a, f a fable about uh, the good results of climate change or a, an artwork mixing uh, chemistry and art about uh, what this climate change uh, has um, created for us why not why not could be a, a surprise i mean i think we 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 think about uh, the, the the mainstream that has a something like a scientific basis about climate change but uh, a different i think that working on different perspectives and working also in a different way could be could be a, a good uh, a good step why not we are we are curious we wait for work of this kind i mean thank you very much if I may complement uh, it, and we okay. absolutely. No, just to say that we we are not giving a prescribed uh, path. We are asking them to address the the aspect of climate uh, climate change, but exactly especially for the teenagers, we are asking to to address to address the issue and to possibly propose a solution. So. I agree there is a bit of problem solving, but we leave a lot of room to their creativity to address the problem the way they want. With gender equality, even less, because we are only asking to address the aspect of gender equality. We are not presenting it as a problem. We are presenting it as a social aspect that, and we leave total freedom to address it the way they want without, uh, without any prejudice, of course. Thank you. Thank you very much both um, Margarita and Alessandro. Uh, please let us know if you have more questions about our presenters. And of course, as a reminder, we have the competition that is running during the STEM discovery campaign. So we encourage you to take uh, part and to showcase your best practices and uh, share with us the activities and the ideas that you have. We're really looking forward to reading all the fables that uh, you're students will, um, will write. And of course, this is a very relevant and extremely interesting topic, uh, which is why uh, the STEM discovery campaign, but also uh, uh, education in general is focusing on sustainability right now. Eleni, I'll just add so one, we have another, uh, one point uh, to a question. Somebody asked about how many entries were there previously, and I think that links uh, to uh, what you've just said about the STEM discovery campaign. So the first year there were over 700 entries. Uh, last year it was um, uh, still a broad range uh, across many European countries uh, with fewer entries um, because of the COVID and the challenges of bringing children together. But nevertheless, the level of creativity last year was absolutely outstanding. And I think because children were very focused at home, uh, uh, that, that was the case. So this year, they, we already have a sense with the increased partnerships, uh, the STEM discovery campaign and so on, uh, the COP26 opportunity to to uh, partner into the uh, climate change activity there that um, really uh, we, we should be uh, looking to nearer the, the first year uh, level of uh, number of entries. So a very, very broad range of contributors both years running. Thanks. Thank you very much, Anne. 
Uh, in the meantime, we have accepted another comment and question. If we have a class of upper primary willing to accept the challenge to blend art and science on this topic and create something more than a text and its illustration in comic strips and embrace the challenge, would it be possible to submit an entry even though they are younger than the age limit? Well, unfortunately, the, unfortunately in every competition, especially when there are awards, for reasons of fairness, is that the other participants, we have to say no to this question. Unfortunately, I regret it very much. But again, as is the case for uh, for the questions on Albania, uh, we welcome any 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 contributions. We may evolve in the future. This uh, this is a dynamic uh, initiative, so we are open. But again, for reasons of fairness to the other participants, we have to respect uh, certain uh, certain rules, uh, including the age limit. Unfortunately, we cannot uh, change that at this stage, especially because it's already open. The competitions we are not in the design phase anymore. It's already open, up and running. Yeah. Can I add just something? I mean, uh, uh, also a, a fair ball in a comic streak can be very creative and we are not, we don't have in our mind a model. So really this class of children can create something totally new. Just the, this idea of minimum two uh, frame up to 10, but then what they create inside is totally free and we would like them to create uh, something totally new inspired by this. So once again, creativity, find in constraint his its force really so so why not why wh wh they should try thank you very much margarita and alessandro um please let us know if you have any additional questions i can see that there is a very intense interest and uh, of course uh, you're absolutely right the terms and conditions and uh, the guidelines exist for a reason so we understand why um, some classes might be ineligible but i have to say that i agree with your comment about the comic strips uh, margarita because um, it is uh, actually a very complicated form of art as well, it takes a lot of uh, craft to create comic strips and find the, the correct captions and uh, create the appropriate illustrations. It's not uh, an easy thing to do at all. Yeah, at all. And also finding the, 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 the words to explain and also to just to choose two or three or four to create a narrative is something really special and to find out a moral. And so, yeah. I think that uh, that's art too. That's art too. And they could also mix science. I mean, in the fable who won last year, the, the, there, were, there were two two bears, one uh, a black bear and uh, a white, and they were afraid and asking each other who, who won, who, who, who was uh, going to disappear first. But then there was a man who came to say we find a solution and the solution was based, was based on chemistry, on pure chemistry or, or some, some substances able to capt other toxic ones. So really they can mix science and, uh, and art even in a comic. So in a fable, in a comic strip. So let's try. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Um, I don't see any additional questions. So I think uh, that would be all. Uh, once again, I would like to share the slide with um, the contact emails when participants can reach out to you. And uh, I think that we can wrap up this webinar. And uh, thank you very much, all three, uh, for being here with us, uh, Margarita and, and Alessandro. Uh, we look forward to seeing what. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, we look forward to seeing what uh, teachers and students across Europe are going to um, create and share with you. 
And of course, we very much look forward to um, seeing the final and winning entries. Okay. Thank you, Eleni. Thank you, everybody. If I may say Thank you. Thank you, Eleni. Of and course. Then, well, first of all, I would like to thank uh, European School Net and you, because uh, thanks to you, we have reached out uh, to yes. a very high number of uh, potential participants. For us, the winners are the participants. I'm not saying this like uh, the Olympic Games is a joke, I'm saying it seriously because we know that for the teachers and especially for children and teenagers, it's important the process of competition because it enables them to have a drive because there is an award, etc. But we also want, uh, let's say, to spread the word as much as possible, thanks to you. And so any, any teacher who can uh, further, uh, let's say, engage uh, children, I think the, the feedback we have received has been very, very positive because the, the children learned a lot, even just uh, about their own uh, uh, classmates by uh, doing this work. So I think that there is a there is a benefit that we cannot just capture with the winners. There is a lot of benefits in the interaction in the class, in doing the team activity, in the process of uh, of thinking and uh, creating. So. Uh, we have to cut off the 10 winners, but we would uh, like to recognize all of them. That's why we are coming to this webinar, to this um, workshop idea of the 1st of October. It's the first time we do a workshop. We would like to engage as much as possible all the participants, starting with the work, the work they have done, not just the winners. So I think we would like to open up uh, for more engagement of all the participants. And so any feedback that the teachers may have, they can yeah. send an email to us with suggestions because uh, we are discovering, let's say, the potential of this initiative uh, ourselves, uh, thanks to all the partners and thanks to the, to the teachers. So I would like to thank them as well yeah. in advance for the, for the participation. And we are ready to, to let's say, have any direct events even with the, with the children uh, who would like to, to get some feedback on their work even if they just participate. So we are available. Um, I truly hope and I'm sure that you're going to receive hundreds of submissions and we very much look forward to seeing uh, uh, <laughs> what the teachers are going to share with you. It is an amazing topic that covers uh, sustainability and citizenship very nicely. So thank you very much for being here with us and for presenting Getting, uh, your project with us. Many thanks to all our participants. Many thanks to my colleague Kierkana. And um, thank you for being here with us today. And we look forward to welcoming you in the future in another webinar. Yes. Have a nice thank evening, you. everyone. You bye, too. everyone. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you very much.